What's up, guys, and welcome back finally to another match from the Brazil Game Cup 2015. It's going to be between Santos, Dex, and Not Today, though I don't really know what's going on with their team name. That's fine because it is going to be Not Today. This is an elimination match. Not Today dropped down by Pain. Key stars with once knocked down Santos' dexterity, so loser is out. And we'll see who is going to be that loser. I'm Mike Loris, going to be joined by More Rage, please, for this second game. It took a while, but hopefully we can get through it. A wild game has appeared indeed. Uh, good to finally be back. Yeah, a lot of delays in between, so apologies for that, guys. Not any of it really in our control, so always kind of the case with lands. But yeah, not today. Certainly will be, uh, at least from the crowd's perspective, favored uh, in this one. I expect Dexterity to put up uh, a good fight. And as you mentioned, uh, we could see some kind of niche picks here because it is in that best of one format and loser does go home. So elimination matchup, uh, balls to the wall in this one. And the first pick IO going to come out for Dexterity. They're interesting to see the Shadow Shaman picked up this early uh, in the drafting phase, but uh, not today. Uh, definitely a, a team that used to use this a lot with Mystico, uh, and, but who is no longer there uh, with the Shadow Shaman. A split push and also all the Disable available to them, but uh, interesting to see them prioritize it to this extent. Yeah, I, I missed that Not Today. That was like one of my favorite teams to watch, but hey, we'll see if uh, this Not Today can step up and entertain me just as much. As you said, weird to see the Shadow Shaman first pick. Uh, I mean, you can make the case maybe that it's like in direct response to the IO, but that's more so the second pick, the Disruptor. You see an IO, you expect the IO tiny, therefore mm -hmm. Disruptor pick is going to be pretty clear here for not today. Shadow mm -hmm. Shaman doesn't do terribly versus this, like just having a point click stun, being able to in theory disable both of them. Uh, I don't know, maybe get a ward trap or something like that, but usually Shadow Shaman, you grab him a little bit later because he's very rarely, yeah. if ever, going to be banned out. Santos Dex is going to grab the IO Tiny combo. It's like always that thing that teams can fall back on. Uh, but Dyer interesting to see not today's back. opening. Like the Disruptor is fine. Mm -hmm. Shadow Shaman, not too sure about. Now they're stuck with two supports already. Yeah, and I mean, despite a couple patches ago, him getting a strength buff, these are both still two very squishy sp supports, two supports, though. Uh, even though uh, the glimpse is there, they are still very susceptible to a relocate gang. I mean, a, a combo from the Tiny will kill off most, uh, both of them for most of the game uh, until that those point boosters at least are picked up uh, towards their Aghanim's upgrades. But yeah, it helps out Dexterity a little bit with the bands uh, in terms of the cores. They're actually going to have a little bit of respect over towards not today with the Invoker Band. Uh, Ember Spirit, for obvious reasons, deals pretty well with uh, IO Tiny. He's got that instant escape mechanism uh, in activating his Remnant. He's also got, of course, a Sleight of Fist, which is nice versus two heroes that are going to stay in close proximity. Darkseer here for not today. One angle that you mentioned before, the Shadow Shaman, lots of split pushing, lots of direct pushing even, just pushing <laughs> towers down mostly with the Serpent Ward. So this is going to be, in theory, the mech carrier here for not today. They want him to be the pseudo medic, and then they should look, be looking towards uh, the death ball. Not today really do need uh, the aggressive heroes now. They have a supporting cast, really. They need the heroes to do the damage. Uh, right. In the mid lane, in those side lanes, someone remaining. like a Quap, like even though not really the best at uh, destroying those buildings, Five just a hero remaining. that would love to fight early, often, and pretty much as often as they can get. But you're expecting Io Tiny time. in the mid lane. There aren't many that heroes that utterly smash this duo. Some heroes yeah. even have a little bit of difficulty staying out of the avalanche toss range. Yeah, one that uh, a couple that do decently well uh, are Lena and the Queen of Pain. Uh, we'll see if that comes through. That still kind of renders not today very squishy overall. Um, and you know the Yule Scepter from the Lena could be nice to dodge. Perhaps a, a combo, maybe the Blink from the Queen of Pain keeps her safe. But really, I've seen very few teams after the buffs to Tiny been able to deal with this combination. And giving it away is already a little bit. Perilous, I would say, uh, for not today. They have the Darks here, uh, Wombo combo into the Static Storm, which could be nice uh, with the vacuum there. And uh, Darks here are a pretty stable laner in general, but still, I'm gonna we're gonna see uh, how they fare through this draft. They are gonna pick up what is it? Definitely a stronger carry at this point, but still, um, really gonna have to create some space early on for the Spectre to find some farm. Yeah, Io Tiny just as a duo scales really well into the later stage, and it's a great combo at applying pressure early on if you can. Uh, you know, get those levels, get an okay time in the lane. 
this is going to make the Shadow Shaman pick a little bit weirder. The split push is definitely here for not today, and it is substantial. Spectre, should she get the necessary amount to farm, a haunt will just kill off a lion, kill off an Io, or at least make them very, very weak. But the amount of pressure that Dexterity can apply to the Spectre is very, very high at this stage. Even though she, in theory, can haunt away, in theory, can you know, dagger mm -hmm. into the trees... Tiny, if he does get a blink dagger, he's looking at insta kill territory with the vast majority of not today's heroes. And dexterity, they haven't even picked up you know their other cores yet. They still have their off lane. Right. They still have their uh, what I imagine to be the safe lane carry. So they can apply a lot more pressure to the specter if they are the ones to decide to go on the aggressive and start to push. Yeah, I mean, even the tether move speed alongside the lion, uh, if the tiny is off farming with an agonims or something, can certainly be enough to get into range uh, to bring down the specters, especially within the first 20 or so minutes of the game. So look for some sort of space creating middle laner. Um, of course, kind of the issue with that is that their mid laner is probably going to be fairly heavily shut down um, be, by virtue of being up against that dual lane. Um, and kind of exposing their weakness is not today here with the specter uh definitely not an aggressive tri lane hero and in that sense it opens up dexterity to go for this anti mage who deals decently with the darkseer in lane and will not really need two supports uh in this one up against the ds so dexterity seems like they definitely have the upper hand uh in terms of the draft thus far they have a super greedy draft. Like the mm. Lion and Io, these are heroes that don't really do that much at levels one and two. Really, they need their mm -hmm. levels to be truly effective. Antimate, of course, we all know he doesn't do jack until much later on. But not today, having picked up the Spectre, are not really in any position to apply pressure. And uh, now with the Queen of Pain pick, I mean, we already mentioned how this is a fine pick for, you know, fighting early and often. Is going to apply a little bit of pressure to Dexterity. But if Dexterity are not pressured, they get to the late game. Well, yeah. it's first of all really hard to deal with an IO Tiny late game at an anti mage on top of that. Then, as yeah. strong as Spectre is, she doesn't really stand much of a chance to do it all by herself. So, not today. I don't really think they want to, but it kind of feels like they have to be the aggressors. If they're sitting back and letting mm. Spectre farm, the anti mage and Tiny are also farming, and that is going to benefit Dexterity a lot more than it's going to benefit Not Today. Yeah, and I mean, you mentioned uh, them, or we both alluded to them needing to create space, and, you know, Queen of Pain is certainly a hero. Uh, able to do so, but I feel like Disruptor and Shadow Shaman a bit sluggish early on, and for them to be able to contribute to those ganks, uh, they're going to really have to rely on this glimpse uh, on top of that 1300 range blink from the Queen of Pain. So, interesting last pickup here. Um, fairly self-sufficient laner uh, in the in the Centaur, and uh, I mean, there's definitely some kill potential with the tri lane uh, of not today, but uh, the Stampede is going to be really nice. Uh, for both chase and disengage here um, uh, where there's like the surge and all the disables on the other side so I don't mind the centaur pickup um, think, I feel like clockwork was banned out um, and that could have worked as well but yeah centaur not bad here uh, Beastmaster perhaps pretty good single target disable against the queen of pain could be nice but they already have quite a bit of that but yeah shadow shaman early on 285 base movement speed um, disruptor about the same so really um, feel like they're gonna have to find a little bit of farm on these on these supports and with a specter in your lane You can't always take full advantage of the jungle, but centaur against her. She should do fairly well So we'll see uh, how how much momentum early on and into the mid game not today can get because as you mentioned uh, The late game with the anti mage and the buffed up tiny is gonna be really difficult for them Well, it's gonna come down to the early game and that means it's gonna come down to the lanes not today have put Goody on the Shadow Shaman boots first on this hero. We could see even with that only at 335 movement speed, quite mm -hmm. the slow hero. It's going to be DDX on the Disruptor. We got Ewo on the Spectre, Schofield on the Queen of Pain, and Angels on the Darkseer. DDX used to be like one of the most explosive players yeah. in the South American scene, and now he's on a Disruptor. <laughs> yeah, not the hero. Explosive and Disruptor, not necessarily synonymous, but for dexterity side, Sono is going to be picking up the tiny that'll leave a uh, delay on his centaur roar, war runner uh, fake sendy going to be on the io it's going to leave 442 on the line and finally over towards that safe lane currently uh, all by his lonesome domi going to pick up that anti mage all right so it looks like it's going to be the anti mage versus darkseer matchup we saw it earlier today mm -hmm. Uh, Darkseer was up against a couple more support heroes, and it seems like worst comes to worst is just going to be going up against the Lion. But for the most part, this is a lane that Anti Mage should be comfortable in. He has the Quelling Blade, so cutting through the creeps is going to be very easy for him. And yeah. just trading hits with that mana break, well, that's not something the Darkseer wants the to be doing, mm -hmm. despite his high armor. 
and his high base damage, so... Wait, is it... Wait. What? Why is Queen of Pain... DDX is going mid? Okay. I mean, that's what I would expect. Okay. Hell yeah! Okay! Explosive <laughs> disruptor. disruptor incoming! <laughs> <laughs> Can't make me eat my words there, but... Yeah, uh, support Queen of Pain. How do you feel about that explosion? <laughs> Um, well, up against Centaur, I think that they're about equally matched. Uh, I mean, just Shadow Strike right clicks compared to Thunder Strike right clicks. I obviously get a little bit more synergy with the Shadow Strike there, but uh, honestly, I think it doesn't really matter Queen of Pain versus Disruptor as opposed to, uh, I mean, when it comes down to versus Centaur. The more questionable thing is is it actually better to have a Disruptor here in this mid lane over a Quap? Is he going to find any CS? Like, he, he's got two. I guess that's fairly admirable, but, like, you don't feel like Disruptor really has much lane presence. I mean, he's actually zoning Sono out pretty heavily just by virtue of having uh, that attack, that 600 attack range, but, yeah. Right. Very odd, to say the least. Disruptor as a mid hero is very Top. similar. Oh. They're They're body blocking up Angel. Angel, but yeah, he's he's gonna be able to make a way, albeit very low on mana. Gonna have to salve and clarity up. All right, so disruptor as a mid hero, as I was saying, very similar to those. Oh, he's actually gonna go strong onto Dex right now. Sono's taking a lot of damage. Thunderstrike will time out and he will get bottled up, but uh, it's very similar to a Rubik to the Ancient Apparition to Shadow Shaman. They're very very niche mid lane heroes. Mm -hmm. They do pretty well with the acceleration, but they fall off very quickly. He's gonna go towards Sona one more time. Does he have mana for Thunderstrike? No, it is short, but Tiny getting roughed up. Is this, <laughs> this the is... new metagame? Is this 0.85? Is this real life? I... Did Disruptor even get buffed? I think they touch Kinetic Field a uh, bit. Thunderstrike has like two seconds lower of a cooldown. Mm. I don't think that's gonna be huge, <laughs> but he's actually doing a lot of damage here. This is a sight to see, to say the least, and the lanes all together are going pretty well for the Radiant side delay, and a little bottom. bit of trouble bot lane, and they are going to bring him down with the Easter Shock there, Schofield going to take quite a bit of punishment from the tower, but support Queen of Pain working out so far, uh, we did mention in the draft there's definitely some kill potential on the Centaur, but uh, he just needs to find his levels and a, a reasonably timed blink. Now they're onto the Darkseer, he's out of mana, no surge, and Anthem Mage just going to work him down. You don't have any mana, then you're just a big meat sack as a dark seer. There's not much that you can do. Antimage is going to draw a very easy kill there. He's having a great time in that safe mm -hmm. lane. About the same as the Spectre. He actually has Radiant a lot of denies. 14 yeah. to 11. This, uh, by putting the Disruptor over in the mid lane, they're getting him an additional amount of levels. Getting a fast static storm is very rarely, if ever, seen. It usually doesn't do a ton of damage because it is so late as an ultimate. But if you get mm -hmm. it, like and the about the same time frame as a mid hero getting level six yeah. it actually does do quite a bit with maxed out thunderstrike as well ddx is looking at quite a lot of nuking power there's no zeus but if he lands a thunderstrike right now he's just gonna get the kill on sono toss up though is gonna kill off the disruptor and now with the bottle tiny will survive yeah uh disruptor is still very weak though that doesn't that hasn't changed yeah, certainly so, and as we mentioned earlier on, going to be uh, pretty susceptible to this tiny combo all game long. So putting in a, him in a core role uh, without really having an escape mechanism, if, if you uh, discount Glimpse for being an escape mechanism, he is going to be in a little bit of trouble. Um, but he's still kind of holding his own here mid lane. DDX though, getting low already uh, as he uh, returns to lane. He's going to have to salve up and once again he's going to have that cancelled with the toss. Tiny's been managing this lane fairly well. He's ahead in CS, although not by a huge margin. His jungle is stacked up a little bit. It's triple stack of hard creeps. That's about it. But hey, as a Tiny, you can clear out really any number of creeps super easily. Down towards bottom lane. They're onto the War Runner. Dagger's going to fly. Both daggers, in fact. And now they're going to leave Ewo to get this kill. <laughs> and I don't think Delay is actually going to be able to escape. Goody, are you going to steal it? Are you going to be that person? No, he's not. He's going to give the kill to the Spectre, as a good support should. That's a super dead Centaur War Runner down towards yep. bottom lane. It'll be pretty much all solved in this lane once he gets level 6. They have really no shot at killing him, but right now Shadow Strike and Spectral Dagger, you're slowed to a crawl as any hero, especially here with no boots. Yeah, so a couple of deaths from either offlaner, but of course the Darks here are going to be a lot easier to find. Yeah. Farm Glimpse back mid lane underneath the tower, but the combo will be there. DDX though barely surviving 14 HP will be brought down to the ball from the IO. They are going to bring down the Tiny thereafter, and Schofield going to return to the fray alongside Goody and will pick up that kill. Already three kills involved for the Queen of Pain 
and four for the Shadow Shaman. Very early aggression from this duo, and uh, not the not the most basic support duo, but either way, top lane Angel maybe in a little bit of trouble here. Does have enough for the surge. We'll be able to make it away. Forces the blink back on Domi as well, and actually is going to force a rotation out from Fakes on the IO to keep his uh, anti mage safe. Meanwhile, DDX. Coming to this top lane before finding his level 6. We'll see if he's able to get anything done. Perhaps looking for this animage. As good as Glimpse is, it's as good as the level 3 Thunderstrike is, which does do a lot of damage. You need that silence. You need some form of crowd control effect if you're going to deal with an anti-mage. And right now, it's just not there. They also don't have level 6 on EWO, so even if they drop him low somehow, there's no cleanup crew. Although, EWO is very quickly closing in on that level and has picked up the urn. So, the Spectre has quite a lot of incentive to leave the lane and go for those haunt ganks or haunt kill steals, and as Spectres usually do. But they really do need the level 6 on the Disruptor. They've given Queen of Pain a little bit of time over in mid. She hasn't really done that much with it, so... A ganking disruptor without level six, kind of weak. Bottom lane, Bye. they're gonna catch delay again with the shackles. They already use hex shock is there. Come more right clicks from Goody with Spectre landing the last hit, and the centaur is going to die again. Zero three zero, only level three at this stage is getting completely mm -hmm. shut down, especially when you compare him to the level six darks here. Yeah, and I mean in the in the meta game, the supports are just so aggressive by nature that centaur has really fallen out of a uh, fallen out of favor in the off lane for a reason, and, and we're seeing it already. Um, the dire side looking to exploit the weakness of that uh, uh, solo darks here in the sense that they put the anti mage pretty much one v one against a mid lane. They are gonna try and catch the combo, but the static storm gonna keep them at bay. DDX uh, gonna have to waste that 90 second cooldown, but uh, either way, uh, the yeah the centaur. Despite them gaining an advantage in terms of that anti-mage uh, without needing two supports by them, they are losing quite a bit in their offlane. They're looking over towards mid where the Tiny is still doing okay here. And DDX having used that uh, ultimate kind of carelessly with the glimpse. I mean, he glimpsed the Tiny out of that static storm. That's not exactly what you want. And he has no kinetic field either. So keeping the enemies in the static storm not going to happen. They're going to jump forward for 442. Slow down on the Lion. Haunt is there. Spectre, the Lusion's going to get stunned, not the real one. And the damage over time effect to kill off the lion. However, Ewo will cash in on the urn charges. Is going to get himself a little bit of cash that way. So it's uh, only a lion kill, but Spectre would like any kill that she can possibly get. Radiant is going to have a ring of Aquila soon enough? Yeah, it looks like she's going to be Dyer's going for that item. I would attack. expect the Spectre to just go for standard Radiance fare. Yeah. Um, certainly works here against the IO. Uh, cancels a blink of the Tiny if he opts for that route and... Uh, the lion as well, so uh, definitely wouldn't mind the radiance here. It's going to be an early drums build so far for Sono on the tiny and doing decently mid lane, but expected him perhaps to do a little bit better. One one and one on this tiny. He's going to return now to his middle lane and DDX continuing to get active uh, has a haste rune and does have the glimpse as well as the static storm up now. No kinetic field just yet. Four four two going to jump forward alongside delay and they're going to. Be able to keep DDX back, but glimpse into the shackle. 442. Gonna be caught out. And that's gonna be a killing spree for the Spectre. Three kills in about four or five minutes now. Mm -hmm. Spectre really is cashing in. She's getting the kills, but more importantly, perhaps she's not falling behind in CS in between those kills. She's pretty much just getting the kills, jumping right back to the lane. Over towards mid, speaking of jumping in, Tiny is gonna jump right on top of the Queen of Pain, avatoss her and kill her off in a hurry. That's what you would expect most of the time versus this matchup of Tiny Io versus a Quap. It doesn't help that Quap is already set behind since she mm -hmm. was played in that support role, but now we see DDX kind of awkwardly sitting at that level seven spot. He has maxed out Thunderstrike, so that does a decent amount of damage, but this isn't really the type of hero like Queen of Pain, like an Io Tiny who can just snowball and run away with the game. From this point onwards, it almost seems like he has to be just that utility hero that Disruptor usually is played as. Like, there is no other real option for yeah. him here. I mean, one kind of saving grace is that the Queen of Pain at least has found levels, if not farm. Um, and in that sense, does have the Sonic Wave available, but maybe caught out top lane. Is going to be able to blink back. Angel going to be able to surge back. Dex going to try and get in range for an Impale. Not going to be there. Sono coming in. Not going to pop a drum charge, though. Doesn't want to dive underneath this tower. And everything going to stagnate for now. But yeah, maybe Queen of Pain gets something done soon. Does have that bottle available. Still no boots, though, uh, for Schofield. So moving around the map fairly slowly at this point. 
That was actually a five man rotation up on the top lane for Dex, leaving Ewo on the bottom lane to farm. Isn't straight rushing the relic, but is gonna get hit with the hoof stomp. TPs are coming in. It's the lion. Can they body block Ewo enough? Well, no, they can't. She's gonna haunt and go towards mid lane, where the IO is actually leaving to go towards bottom. <laughs> He's gonna cancel that one, but uh, Ewo is actually now gonna just gonna turn around and go for the IO kill, knowing that he doesn't have the relocate to get out. Ewo is gonna clean up the IO very easily. I'm pretty sure that wasn't the plan, but I'm pretty sure he's also going to be okay with that. Here comes the Tiny, looking for the Avatos combo that won't quite be lethal, especially with the Thunder Strike and Shadow Strike. He's going to Avalanche, completely miss DDX, toss up the Queen of Pain, do a little bit of damage, now he gets Glimpse back right into Ewo. So now he's next to his target, he's actually not going to get caught in the field. Ewo has no more mana for a dagger, but still going to chuck out those urn charges. Help is coming forward with the Lion, but it's too late, the Tiny's already dead. And now they see the Lion, there is no Glimpse, there is a dagger, however, from Ewo, and the urn charge, and goodies on the high ground. Dex just trapped in the river with everyone else on Not Today on the high ground looking in. Yeah. They lose a lot. Yeah, very overzealous play, I feel like, from the Tiny there. Jumping into the river, pincered in by both the Queen of Pain uh, as well as Ewo. And then very nice play from the high ground as well from DDX. So just good positioning overall uh, from Not Today. The Anti-Mage has been quietly farming up and has found quite a bit. Um, but across the map, they're doing well. And as you've mentioned, Ewo has been involved 5-0-3, oh, 8 of the 10 kills of Not Today, and yet really hasn't fallen off in any significant way on the CS chart. Only 3 below this enemy mage. Yeah, the fact that she's up against pretty much no lane opponents certainly doesn't mm -hmm. hurt. Like, Delay at this point has to try to get something else done. And this is the downside of Centaur. If you do get shut down and it's not impossible to see that happen, as we right. see right now, you're not a super useful hero. Stampede is really, really good. But of course, it makes your allies better, so it does depend on your allies' play style. They're going to try to go for Ewo. They do land the Hex from super long range. Spike is going to connect as well, but she's just not taking any damage from this one. And now she might even turn around straight onto 442. This is a maxed out Spectral Dagger. Delay will protect his line with a threat of a Hoof Stomp, but this is supposed to be a gank on the Spectre. And now it's the Lion who has to be careful, because Spectre is packing some serious heat right now. Blink forward, Screen Pain onto 442. There's a Sonic Wave, and that's going to clip through the Stampede as well. That's the first use of Stampede, and it didn't do jack to save the Lion. Schofield's gonna draw that kill, and this tower gonna continue to take a beating. I don't think they have enough to kill it off. Well, they might with the next creep wave, but the more important thing is that Ewo is getting assist gold, getting kill gold, and has the haunt as they are going to find Sono in the river. Short hex, longer shackle. They have no mana for the uh, shock, but Ewo's gonna come right in. Has no mana for the dagger, but the screw of pain. One more right click. Tiny gonna go down. Now they're onto 442. Ewo's gonna lead the charge. He's going to land an urn charge, has enough for a dagger. That should just about be lethal. If he's able to connect it, it's nighttime though, and he loses vision. And now with the anti-mage coming in, they're going to try to go for Goody. Blink forward, anti-mage has a mana void. Goody should fall eventually. Not to the mana void, not to the double edge, but I don't know if this Shadow Shaman really has any way of getting out of here. He's going to get uh, blinked upon by the anti-mage. He's just going to try to waste time because the lion's being chased down by the Spectre in the meantime. Second double edge is going to kill off the Shadow Shaman. Now Ewo is going to come in with the help of DDX. They have a level 2 glimpse, and that is in range of the anti-mage. Static Storm is there. Kinetic Field is going to latch him. No blink out for the Antimage. He's going to fall to the damage over time. Darkseer going to draw that kill as he also made his rotation in. 15 to 5 and not today. They lose a couple of heroes, but they gain yeah. even more than they lost. And crucially, they gain them on the Spectre. Now only a yeah. thousand gold away from her relic. Great patience from DDX there as well. Uh, saw the Centaur first, waited out to see the Anti-Mage expose himself to the land creeps, and then glimpse back the more important target, especially considering how shut down. Um, the Centaur has been nicely baited out on the Stampede as well earlier, so they didn't have it for that engagement. And overall, yeah, not today, just really asserting themselves across the map on this one. They're going to take their first tower of the game here, but in terms of the kill score, really not even close to a contest right now. 3,400 gold on Ewo. And the net worth chart is just slowly but surely rising in favor of not today. They're going to drop the wards over towards mid. Avatos is going to catch Goody right now. Stampy is there as well, so if they get the spike, they get the beat down. That's going to be Shadow Shaman down. However, the reinforcements are coming in, and Sono's in a little bit of trouble. He's going to get Glimpse right back in. No Static Storm just yet. No Relocate either. He is going to cast it, Io, but it's a little bit too late. The Tiny's already dead, and now Io might just die as well. There is still going to be no Static Storm, but there's going to be a no Vacuum kind of Ion Shells either. as well as a wall if they need it. Tower is not even going to provide Io with that much cover since it is so low. And Queen of Pain is going to come right back in. Tether out is going to keep the Io actually perfectly safe, so never mind. Io is going to survive, however the tower will not. That should be Relic Gold, and it is Relic Gold for the Spectre. Uh, she doesn't have this courier in the right spot right now, but as you mentioned before, Anti-Mage is still quietly farming up in this game, though he did die. Uh, the farm anti-mage is something that decks can use to get themselves back mm -hmm. in this game because the anti-mage, Io, Tiny, these are some explosive late game heroes. Yeah, unfortunately, um, them having to need their anti-mage 
to be up in that jungle. They're not going to have too much recovery available in terms of stacks for this tiny. He does have four deaths, his three kills at this point, and he is kind of keeping up with his uh, laning equivalent in the Disruptor, but keep in mind that you know it was a dual lane versus a, a single laner mid lane, so Tiny not exactly where he wants to be, and a lot more is going to rest on the shoulders of this anti-mage uh, than they would have wanted. But yeah, Relic going to come out for Ewo, and he's only 1,000 gold away from that full Radiance. 15 minutes in on top of Urn Tread's Aquila. This Spectre is going to get scary quick. Okay, so DDX has... 2,000 gold, and I don't know what the build is for a mid disruptor. <laughs> like, usually if a hero is holding this much gold, you would say blink dagger, but that doesn't really yeah. help disruptor a ton. Is it just like a? I mean, straight it gives you like a ridiculous initiation range, right? Uh, 1,800 on the glimpse plus your blink range um, is you know 2,800 roughly. <laughs> Uh, in terms of initiation range, but yeah, I would ex kind of expect him to maybe just grab up a point booster at least. Uh, so interesting. Even a Veil works fairly well uh, with the Shadow Shaman along with uh, the Queen of Pain. So we'll, we'll see what he offers for, but generally you would expect a blink when you're holding on to, to 2k gold here. And he is near that side shot, but not going to pick it up just yet. Three-man smoke on top of uh, Baiting Angel and Lane here. And they have exactly the targets they want nearby. They're going to drop down this ward. They will find out Sono. Relocate. Probably going to be channeled up here. And a glimpse back into the Static Storm. Just outside the Static Storm, actually. But the Sonic Wave going to hit on two. Scream of Pain is there. The I.O. going to pop. Sono going to be able to get into the trees. One last right click from Ewo will bring down the Centaur. And overall, they get three kills. The Tiny is able to TP out. But they'll get the last Tier 1 on top of it. Meanwhile, Anti-Mage pushing bottom. But more than healthy enough is this tower to defend. Uh, if the Radiant opts to do so, and they do have four TPs available to them, everyone but Ewo's Spectre. Of course, Haunt is down, but they can mount the defense bottom lane if they need to. Still three for nil right now. They need a little bit of extra mana here for the Shadow Shaman. I don't think anyone actually has follow charges nor arcane boots. I don't know actually DDX does, but Goody either way is not going to have that just yet. He's going to blink forward, get Thunder Strike onto Sono. Gotta watch out for that blink disruptor, man. <laughs> 16 minutes in, he's going to apply Thunder Strike to you. So dangerous. But still, they take the tower for free, they take three kills, and the Io, who's supposed to get the Tiny out of there every single time, is a little bit off on his relocate timing and ends up failing that one. Antibage is going to actually pick up Battle Fury. Yeah, he does have that one complete on the Courier whenever he's able to get that delivered, but he's going to have quite a long way to go. Yo already has his Radiance, and Antibage with Battle Fury can eventually surpass a Spectre with Radiance is going right. to need a lot of time and is honestly going to need you to stop getting these kills. Like 709, that's not a mm. score Spectre should have. Yeah, I mean, direct farming war, perhaps the Animage could edge out the Spectre, but the fact that he pomps Haunt and it pretty much kills the IO and the Lion at this point is a certainly very scary. The Lion is sitting on base HP with a circlet and a couple branches, 644 to his name. Doesn't even have his level 6 just yet, so... Yeah, things not looking good, at least for the supports and the offlaner for that matter, of the dire side. Well, the Queen of Pain in the meantime is going to get uh, not that much farm either, but this is a support Queen of Pain we're talking about. And in all honesty, it doesn't feel like she's a really a support hero. Like, what she's mm -hmm. done in these fights, at least, is more or less what a core Queen of Pain is supposed to be doing. And though she mm -hmm. doesn't really have the farm to back it up, she's just going to bulk up drums, power tread, strength, and she's difficult to kill. They get a glimpse back onto the Anti-Mage. Static Storm is prepped and ready. Spike is going to give him a little bit of time, but not quite enough. Finger Death on the Darks are not going to do it. Now they're going to mech up and charge forward for more. It's going to be right on top of the line. One swipe from Ewo is going to get that kill. Now they're going to look for more. Blink forward from DDX. Has a glimpse in three seconds. And with the Thunderstrike vision, there's no way the delay is actually going to run away from this one. Glimpse right back. Welcome to the Thunderdome. You're going to die. That's going to be the <laughs> Queen of Pain notching another one. And at the same time, Shadow Shaman actually getting a kill on the Io because it seems like he got relocated upon. No, just ran into the Io Tiny and, well, ended up getting a kill. So nice for yeah. Goody as well. It's a four for nil. Yeah, DDX about 150 units off of finding the glimpse on the tiny as well. So, three for nil across the map, or four for nil uh, with that IO kill, as you mentioned. And uh, they'll be able to put some, at very least, chip damage into this uh, middle lane tier one. There is a relocate available when they come back up. No stampede, though, uh, as they use the top lane. No finger of death either. So, the fight potential is pretty slim uh, for dexterity, and they'll definitely concede at least this mid tier one um, before looking to fight. Shadow, uh, the Spectral Dagger does give Vision right now, and Vision is what DDX is looking for. 
They're gonna try to defend her at least. They'll poke and prod, but this tower is definitely involved. Blink forward from Schofield. They get the toss on him with Angel, actually, who also blinked in, but they get the glimpse back now. Onto the anti mage. Is there a static storm? There's a hex. There's a shackle. Nothing's gonna interrupt. In the meantime, vacuum wall onto two. Spikes can help Dex disengage. DDX is gonna land another Thunder Strike onto Delight. Can do sizable amounts of damage. Nice avalanche onto a whole bunch of heroes, but it's not gonna save them. A centaur is gonna get jumped by Quinn of Pain. Evil is gonna burn down the tiny, and now he's gonna get the glimpse back onto the Io, who has no one to tether to. Doesn't even have a tether on cooldown. Sono just bought back. He's gonna instantly get grasped by Goody. Gets a toss out, but that's not gonna save him versus this damage over time from Ewo. He will kill off the Shadow Shaman, but it's just not worth it. He was forced to buy back for that, and it's another one for four exchange. One for five, actually, uh, in favor of not today, and Spectre mm -hmm. is still cashing in, and they might even take these towers now. Yeah, uh, looks like not today. Kind of proving the public right on this one. Uh, play very indicative of the odds. 79% favorite. 20 minutes in, they're going to take down the tier 3 in the middle lane. And a couple of immediate um, respawns and deaths for the dire side. Still really not ready to fight. They now have the stampede up at the very least. But Tiny on the sidelines for another 15 seconds. They're going to at least bring down this range racks in that time. Keeping you all on the front lines. And he will take, excuse me, an impale. Hex is there, but still no follow-up. No tiny combo, and they really don't have much damage at all. No finger of death, still for five seconds. Vacuum back is gonna bait the stampede out, and that'll probably uh, cue the aggression further for not today to take out this r melee racks mid lane. And they're gonna get a, a full free lane of racks 21 minutes in. Ewo is 11 0 and 14 on this Spectre, standing in the front line, sitting on level 13. <laughs> really not afraid of anything at this point. Gonna wait out the last hit as well. To get that money, man. I guess you get a heart now as Spectre because you can. The Queen mm -hmm. of Pain, also, this is a quote unquote support quap, is 7 1 and 9. Doesn't really have the CS, but definitely looks like she's been played in that mid lane. Maybe had a rough time, got ganked a couple of times, you know, not a big deal. That's the entirety of the mid lane taken 20 minutes in. Nine times out of 10, that's just going to be a death sentence. The tiny yeah. IO combo feels like has done very little. Like they've landed occasionally these Avatos combos, but no relocates, at least no offensive relocates have been happening from this IO. They've gone for maxed out overcharge, yet Sono's not nearly in a position to actually sit in one place and fist fight with Not Today. That combo it seems like yeah. it's just not going to work out right now. That means more and more pressure's on the anti mage. He has Battle Fury, he has Vlad's Power Treads. It's not bad for 22 minutes, but none of his allies actually have much of anything. It's hard to say where Dexterity lost this game. I mean, you could easily point to the off lane and be like, and say that that was the worst decision. But I mean, the inherent, I mean, bot lane, they are going to find out Ewo finally with the finger of death, the full combo of the entire team basically uh, is going to be needed to bring him down. And 442 as well as Fake's going to get very low just to the haunt damage. But um, they're going to lose their tier two top lane. And yeah, it's hard to say where they really lost out in this early game. I mean, the rotations were just really good all around from not today. I feel like the inherent mental damage you take when you draw evenly with a disruptor mid lane is just going to hurt you for the rest of the game. So War is going to drop top lane, and they're going to take half of this HP of the tier 3 away. Uh, without their specter, though, probably look for not today to uh, take this and back out. And they will try and get away, but right over the surge, they're going to be able to disable up Angel. Glimpse back is going to try and keep Sono at bay, but Goody going to pay with his life as well. Mana Void will be there to dunk him down. They lose their tier 3 though, and lose, I mean, a couple of heroes that'll feed over some value, but not today, still in a very comfortable position at this point. 23 minutes into the game with a tier 3 and a full lane of racks down. That is a big gold swing in favor of Santos Dex. It's the gold swing that they desperately need at this stage, but it's just not enough despite how large it is. They're going to jump in towards the Anti-Mage. Oh, DDX going to get a little bit too close to the Centaur. Take a double edge, drop down to below half HP. Kinetic Field does go up. He's going to Yules himself. That's not really going to save him. Even though with the blink out, he will get a little bit of distance. It's not going to happen. Not today. They definitely are feeling like they won this game. I feel like that's a play that you only make if you already mm. know that you have it in the bag. That's not necessarily the case right now. Feeding over one yeah. too many kills can give the anti-mage time to get online, can give the tiny closer to his Aghanim Scepter, is actually very close to that item after having just grabbed the Blink Dagger. So it's not not today out of the woods just yet. So they mm. have to tighten the screws and make sure that they don't make any of those careless plays. Uh, yeah, it looks like they won't. for the anti-mage, however, that's not going to happen. Yeah, it looks like they won't quite wisen up and start playing back. Uh, don't want to be feeding your heroes over one, way, uh, one by one like this, but 
they will continue to assert pressure across the map, continue to choke out this anti-mage from farming. Um, he's caught up admirably, especially with the last couple of kills, was able to net in that top lane, but uh, still, they're going to be able to assert pressure, they're going to be able to establish vision, uh, which already the Dire are trying to mitigate, and look to continue to choke him out. Of course, Tiny IO can be across the map farming with the relocate available to them, so maybe frees up some space for their anti-mage, but uh, don't look for not today uh, to take their take their foot off the pedal anytime soon. Well, Schofield might get jumped right now. They have Blink Dagger of Centaur. Blink Stomp's gonna land. Blink 4 from the Anti-Mage. Impale is there. However, here comes the Spectre, maybe. Gonna jump for 442. Is instead gonna go for the Centaur. Seems like either of these targets is viable. They look back onto the Anti-Mage straight into a Voodoo Hex. And now he's gonna get burned down by the Spectre. Somehow the Lion is the one to make it out from there. But yeah, the uh, Lion's not worth that much. So it's a correct Focus fire there from not today. They get the heart on the Spectre. They get the Shiva's guard in the dark here. With the anti mage down for 50 seconds, and with top lane already lacking yeah. tier three tower, they should be looking at Rax right now, and they should get it. I mean, often you would kind of just take that pick in middle lane, continue to farm, uh, wait for your Queen of Pain to come back, but instantly decisive was Ewo on that haunt. They immediately rotate everyone towards that mid lane, look to fight, end this game, and that kind of shows you. Uh, how aware they are of their vanish. Toss back onto Ewo into a stomp. They're gonna get a two-man vacuum into the wall though. Sonic wave onto three as well. Mech's gonna keep everyone healthy from the radiant side. Ewo charging forward, finds the IO. Sono trapped up in the kinetic field. He'll be the fifth to fall. And Dexterity in 26 minutes. It's looking like the end for them. Two lanes of racks down to your fours being right clicked away at. And everyone on the sidelines for at least eight seconds. Anti-Mage coming up by himself. Not gonna be able to do a, uh, any of them anything against this radiant lineup and looks like it's going to be the end of the road of the brazil game cup for dexterity it uh wasn't really a long road since we just have best of ones the initiation there was actually pretty darn good on a specter that's like what you're supposed to do unfortunately she has a heart of trap and she is not an easy kill has not been an easy kill for this entire game they're gonna do a little bit of fountain diving it's gonna be the lion because it's always the lion he's gonna <laughs> fall but yeah, this Ancient is also going to die. Not today, are going to claim victory, and they're going to keep their hopes alive. They don't know who their lane opponent or who their next opponents are going to be just yet, because that game has yet to be played. But sooner or later, they will know. They're just going to do more found diving with Evo. He's going to even buy a Ghost Scepter. Got to get that Ethereal Blade. Shotgun Spectre. New meta. But uh, I don't think the <laughs> Disruptor mid lane, even though that's usually <laughs> going to be like one of the telling points of the game, that wasn't yeah. it. It was the fact that Spectre got so many kills in the Centaur, yeah. got so many kills on everybody, and then just never stopped. Yeah, that safe lane just went very, very poorly for the Dire side. And so uh, perhaps a reason why we don't see the Centaur picked up at all. You mentioned it. I mean, he becomes kind of useless for a while uh, if he's shut down in lane. He has no recovery mechanic whatsoever. Um, can farm up stacks very slowly, but... All together, well played by uh, Not Today, and they're going to move on to face uh, the winner of Arctic versus INTZ. We saw INTZ play earlier today, and they looked like they were able to mount a comeback throughout that mid-game after a very good start um, from T-Show, but a uh, little bit of poor late-game decision-making, so we'll see if they're able to sure that up uh, against uh, their next uh, opponent. Do they go up against each other, or are they just going up against... The losers from the winners bracket round two. We're, we're, it's not that clear right now, but uh, we'll look into that for you guys. Either way, the next game, of course, I haven't pulled that up because I am ill prepared. Uh, should be the next lower bracket game. Arctic, as you said, going up against Ints, and then well, after that, we don't know who it's going to be. Arctic versus T Show. That's just not right. Is it right? <laughs> uh, yeah, so so yeah, you're correct. So second round of the winner's bracket going to drop down. Uh, Pain or Keed going to face mm. uh, Not Today, and then Arctic uh, Ints winner will face uh, loser of ISGT show. So uh, I think we're having, I think we're going to have uh, the loser bracket game matchups coming up soon. Yeah, so someone else is going to be eliminated. Someone else is going to join Dexterity Santos on the sidelines, on the bench. Arctic had a really bland showing up against the Zerus where they never really did anything in that game mm -hmm. and just ended up losing. But either way, that's going to be coming up a little bit later, guys. Hopefully it's only a little bit later because the schedule has been kind of eh. But uh, yeah, it's going to be coming up next. If you enjoy the Dance game, game, be sure to stick around. We can play some dank memes for you guys. I've been joined by M More Rage. Please, MRP underscore Dota. I'm Mike Loris on Hefla TV. Follow us on Twitter under all of those handles. 
and we'll be back for the next game, guys. See you then.